I think the technology um, is one thing that, I mean, it's here to stay. Technology is not going anywhere. We're using technology. We will continue to do so. So what's really, really critically important is not to think of should we use technology for mental health or you know, does technology affect our mental health? Of course it does. And yes, we should use technology, but the real questions are how should we use it? And to really think about how we can use technology in a way that can maximize benefit for individuals, can you know offer tools to help with their mental health, um, and think of ways to prevent harms or to think of ways, you know, if let's use social media for example maybe if they're on their screen too long um, they maybe are using it doesn't really have an impact for some people there's some impact but maybe that's because they're using it too much and then there's other people that has really serious impacts and it actually results in really really detrimental consequences what's important for us to do is kind of to unpack that connection so why is it so bad for some people who interact on social media but not causing any concern for others and actually sometimes offering benefit and I think one of the things to try to think about is how to use research to explore these connections between technology and our mental health to then try to maximize the benefits that it might offer A good example is someone might be totally isolated, not able to leave their home. Uh, they may live with a very stigmatizing mental illness. A social media connection can op offer a lifeline. I mean, that can actually be a connection. And I've met people, they've told me their stories about how social media was the only way they could connect with people uh, because they felt so isolated and alone with their condition. It offered, you know, uh, examples of what people can do to overcome those challenges. Uh, it offered, you know, hope, um, the feeling of not being alone. So I, I see that as, you know, a way technology can play a really, really important role. Uh, and again, uh, my interest in that has a lot to do with what I've learned talking with people. So not because I read it in some research article or read it in some book, but actually I just kind of was interested and talked to people. And then they told me about how this had an impact on their, uh, on their, on their health and their mental health. I've also met people that have told me they've encountered really, really um, hateful and hurtful content online. And it just led to a really uh, terrible impact on their mental health. So I think those are two, you know, completely polar opposite stories. There's also other people that just kind of mindlessly scroll and use it and it may not be the best thing for them. So we have to try to understand, uh, again, this maybe connects to the individual story stories, but trying to understand what ways does social media or other technology cause harm, what ways does it offer benefit, and then how do we protect people against those harms, or how do we maximize the opportunities for benefit. And I think that's another way that research can play a key role. Um, but again, it's trying to move to the question of how technology can do this and how we can help, rather than should we use technology, I mean, the answer is of course, we're not going to not use technology, but we can think of ways to use it in a much healthier uh, and I think productive and beneficial way. For our, our mental health and well-being. I think it's, it's incredibly exciting, that type of rich data set. Um, but then yeah, I think I, I liked what you highlighted, you know, how, how to connect that with actually real voices. Because um, big data, again, it's, it's something that often is, is abstract. It's like kind of, you know, people don't, you can't really see it. It's a lot of numbers. Um, but trying to think that, you know, you have to remember all of those numbers, each data point actually is someone's story. They are, it is connected to an individual. Um, so I think trying to highlight the voices of the individuals that are represented by that data is really really, really important. Um, the other reason with, that it's so important to connect big data research with actual people uh, and personal stories is that that data, there's so many things that can be analyzed, but it might not be important. Uh, we can run all kinds of models. We can run analyses. We can run statistical models. We can find st you know, statistically significant virtually anything when you're dealing with a data set like that. But unless we know it's important for somebody uh, and talk to those individuals and who they might be, and if we know that what we're doing is important, they can really drive what type of research questions we should be answering. Uh, what, type of, you know, what type of research question is important to a certain community uh, that could 
inform policy and practice, we can use that data. But I think really having the questions coming from those individuals is really important. So um, I think that's one way to link the two, absolutely. Um, one other thing too is sometimes the data, uh, it's not always clear. Uh, I've known, I've seen that in my experience in my own research is sometimes we have data and you'll see patterns or you'll have findings in the data and sometimes it's hard to make sense of those but then you talk to people and then you try to understand. And that's really, I think, another key piece. It's, uh, you know, it's, there's uh, you know, a real value in actually talking to real individuals who are, again, those data points are all people. We have to, I think that we have to be you know, uh, aware of that and, and, uh, and, and remember that. But I think also uh, we can actually talk to those individuals to help us better understand things that we might be finding in the data that may not be clear, uh, you know, from a group of researchers sitting in a room with computers, those the, the answers might not really uh, be clear to us at that time. So that's where I think talking to people is also incredibly important. So I think this is, I mean, it's such an incredibly exciting uh, collaboration. And I think that, um, again, leveraging this kind of remarkably rich data set uh, that, that, uh, that CDEX has for, for all of Brazil, I think is, uh, I mean, it's incredibly powerful. This will, uh, you know, this will shed light on questions um, to do with mental health uh, and looking at mental health across different social gradients, uh, across different regions uh, in ways that we could never have done before. Um, and I think for, um, as a researcher and for thinking of our, our team, this is, you know, this is really exciting. I mean, this is going to be such cutting edge uh, science and research that, um, that, uh, you know, ultimately we, we, you know, the vision is to have this have a positive impact on policies, uh, on thinking of, you know, how can uh, governments implement programs that could have widespread reach and positive impact on mental health. Um, thinking, you know, the impact of something like the Bolsa Familia program, how does that impact mental health? And this will really, uh, you know, really help us understand that, you know, for example, um, the association between poverty and poor mental health. That is clearly represented in, in you know, cross-sectional uh, studies, but trying to understand the exact, you know, how the exact impacts of poverty, what, how they affect functioning in different parts of life, and but then also what are the ways to actually uh, address those concerns through interventions, through programs. Uh, those are some of the really exciting questions um, that we can address, and hopefully well, this will also lead to new projects um, to begin testing these things uh, in real world settings. So, you know, working directly with health systems to actually, so what we've learned from the big data, connecting that with voices of patients and individuals, and then trying to then evaluate whether we can actually have an impact through clinical settings, through health systems and, and other types of settings in, in real world. Uh, you know, taking the data and then informing real world practice. I think this, uh, you know, one of the things is this data is, we couldn't even imagine actually having, being able to study these types of things with the current, you know, data in the United States, for example. Uh, it's so fragmented, it's, you know, it's variable across settings, but this is, I think, an exciting opportunity, the way that data has been harmonized across all these different, uh, you know, different programs and different government institutes that I think then, Absolutely, it could have an impact locally, well, most definitely, which is uh, would be a really important outcome from this research. Um, but then, hopefully, can also inform you know practices in other countries and other places, because um, I know there'll be a great deal of interest globally in the, in in what we find from these from this uh, research project. <laughs>